The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Benevolent viewers, welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Today's episode of the Stop Animal Cruelty series features two short documentaries about the inhumane treatment of water birds by the meat industry. In the first film, we will learn about the unconscionable practice of raising ducks and geese for foie gras, a fatty, diseased liver which is considered a luxury food in some countries. The documentary is narrated by the late Sir John Gilgood, a distinguished English actor who won an Academy Award for his role in the 1981 motion picture, Arthur. The following film, entitled Victims of Indulgence, Force Feeding for Foie Gras, was produced by the US-based animal rights organization, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. ducks or geese skimming across a lake in a graceful landing would probably agree that these beautiful energetic birds are delighted to be alive. Ducks and geese have elaborate courtship rituals and develop caring steady relationships with each other and sometimes with members of other species. Goose has chosen a dog as a dear friend and the two spend most waking hours together. In the wild they've been known to live as long as 18 years. But today on foie gras farms throughout the world birds can be slaughtered when they're just three months old. Hello, I'm Sir John Gilgood. Like most people I care about animals and abhor cruelty of any kind. From the French meaning fattened liver, foie gras is produced by forcibly overfeeding male ducks and geese to make their livers expand to four to six times their normal size. We did witness the force feeding procedure, which um, the producers will tell you is a gentle procedure and it's done with great care, actually. Um, the, the force feeding mechanism is a metal tube that's just stuck down the, the esophagus of the duck. Force feeding was done three times a day for um, 28 days to produce the fattened liver. And um, the workers would enter the, these small pens. We would have um, five to 16 birds in a pen. The worker would restrain the bird with his legs and then force the, the duck's neck upward and then force the beak open and then shove the, the metal pipe into the duck's throat and then pump food into his stomach. You just reach down like this, grab a duck's head, and then reach up like this, and the pipe, like a, a hose nozzle, he would take it and just slide it down into the throat and press a button on the top that would activate a pneumatic pump, an air-driven pump, and it would just force the food into their stomach. In France, among other European countries, ducks and geese are raised for foie gras. White geese are first exploited to produce down for the clothing and bedding industries. Grey geese go directly into foie gras production. About 8,000 tons of foie gras are produced worldwide each year, and several foie gras producers in the United States and thousands more in countries like France, Hungary and Israel slaughter about 13 million ducks and 1 million geese each year. The careless and rough handling of birds is not limited to large factory farms. Even on small farms, force feeding is done with only the final product in mind, the fattened liver. This is factory farming in its most literal sense when they actually connect the machine to an animal. This machine is connected 
for a short period of time while, it's, while food is being pumped in. In 1991, Peter sent undercover investigators inside a major foie gras producer in New York State's Catskill Mountains. Many ducks who were very sick up there, they weren't able to walk. And instead, they would push themselves along on their stomach, on their keel, and kind of use their wings to move, or move around. Many of the ducks couldn't reach the watering bins or their food. It's, it's a very difficult situa situation for them from the time they hatched until the time they die. And I think it gets worse as time goes on as they're approaching the time that they're going to be slaughtered. Just the, the force of that tube going down the esophagus, the irritation of that, um, fed so fast, so full. It just takes two seconds is how long it takes. You can imagine the pressure involved in the, the food material would often bubble up out of the mouth and they would inhale that material. Over several weeks, it makes it impossible I believe, for these birds to feed properly on their own. I think that, that virtually all the birds that we saw could not live on their own anymore. The, the beaks are damaged, the, the esophagus is damaged, the stomach is damaged. There's so much physical damage that these, that these animals simply cannot eat properly on their own anymore. Findings during the autopsy uh, were appalling. Uh, birds with their beaks cut in a ragged manner, they were de-beaked. And uh, there was, they had foot in infections because they had injured the pads in their feet. They had greatly enlarged livers, which is what they're trying to produce. But in one case, uh, these big livers are very easy to break when the bird is roughly handled. And there was, the livers had been broken and there was a large large hemorrhages into uh, the thoracoabdominal cavity or the opening um, around the intestines. Death from ruptured internal organs is so common that workers are paid a bonus if they kill fewer than 50 birds. There was a, a financial incentive plan for um, the workers who were force feeding the ducks that if they didn't kill over a certain number of ducks they would receive you know, extra money each month the esophagus would blow out. I mean, they would just be filled so full so fast, that, and they call it blowouts. It, was, it had a common term because it happened so often. I found one duck who had a very large wound on, on its neck, and um, in fact, it was infested with maggots. This duck was actually outside. It had escaped from the pens. I watched it drink from a puddle, and I could actually see water coming out of the wound of its neck. It was, the wound was so large. Not only is foie gras created in a cruel manner, but it is also detrimental to the health of the person consuming it. I bought a piece of foie gras in a New York shop and I had our veterinarian prepare a slide that he sent to a veterinary pathology lab and their report was summarized with the diagnosis hepatic lipidosis, which means fatty liver disease. So here is a sample of a gourmet food that carries with it a diagnosis. So foie gras is a disease being peddled as a gourmet food a delicacy that both humans and ducks can live without. Please never buy foie gras or order it in restaurants and be certain to tell others why. Turn, we will learn about the horrific fate of millions of gentle ducks on factory farms from the second short film on today's Stop Animal Cruelty program. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television.
The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is Animal World, our co-inhabitants, with another episode in our Stop Animal Cruelty series. Next, we present a short documentary entitled Ducks Out of Water, which was produced by the UK-based animal protection organisation Vegetarians International Voice for Animals, or VIVA. Water is essential to ducks. Water is fundamental to these aquatic animals and central to their lives. Death starts very early from a variety of diseases and skeletal defects. This little duckling has become trapped and is likely to die here. Just like the bird on whose carcass he crouches. So much for care and attention. To begin with, there's room in the sheds to move around, but as the birds grow, the available space reduces. UK duck farming produces 20 million birds a year, at least 90% being factory farmed. Death is built into the economics, with about 1 million birds dying before the end of their short seven-week life. The sheds are supposedly inspected three times a day and all corpses removed. Yet this carcass is in an advanced state of decomposition and there are many more like it. In today's intensive farms, ducks never even see water, except to drink. These are aquatic animals, and yet they have to fight for every drop of water from these nipple drinkers. It's the only water they'll ever see. Lame and diseased birds are unlikely to be able to reach the nipples, and so will die a distressing death. The litter underfoot is not changed from the beginning of the seven-week life cycle until the end. Overcrowded conditions promote disease, and the answer, as always in farming, is the liberal use of antibiotics. All duck producers boast of good husbandry and their concern for the animal's welfare, and yet sites like these can be seen on most intensive farms. Good welfare and factory farming are a contradiction in terms. This is another big UK duck producer. Not only is water supplied just one drop at a time from nipple drinkers, 
The company once boasted that it included an enzyme in the duck's food which reduced their demand for water. Viva has filmed inside all the big duck producers and the scenes are much the same in all of them. Despite providing small water troughs, problems such as crusty eye seem just as common. Our actions have ended the painful practice of debeaking ducks where the end of their bills are amputated in an attempt to limit damage from aggression. But there is much, much more to do. The producers and retailers all accept this institutionalized mass abuse of animals. Viva doesn't and will continue to campaign to end it and the PR hype and spin upon which it depends. You can help too by sending for one of our Ducks Out of Water action packs. Clearly, the heartless treatment factory farm ducks and geese are subjected to is appalling and unacceptable. The best way to stop this activity is to adopt a compassionate, healthy plant-based diet. By not consuming animal products, we can put an end to this senseless cruelty. We would like to give our special thanks to People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals and Vegetarians International Voice for Animals for their noble efforts to end the suffering of animals. Caring viewers, thank you for your blessed presence today on Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May all beings learn to live together in harmony.